I have a protein skimmer that has been using for nearly 10 years. Recently, a rare incident happened to one of the inlet pumps of this protein skimmer. The needle brush of the axis inside was broken. Because the inlet pump of my protein skimmer is an external type. The simplest solution is, buy a new pump and replace it. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19, both the protein skimmer and the pump agents have no stock of the same pump or the needle brush accessory. Such large protein skimmers are often expensive. Take my model as an example. The price of a brand new skimmer with the same power is more than 800 US dollar. On the other hand, an ordinary pump with the same power is under 250 US dollar. Therefore, I decide to do a DIY modification again. The method is, choose an ordinary pump with the same power, and modify its ordinary fan blade axis. The fan blades of an axis are generally made of plastic. Use a hand saw to remove unnecessary parts. Avoid using an ordinary saw blade. Because the ordinary saw blade is relatively wide, it is easy to be clamped in the saw pit. And the fan blade is a quite thin piece of plastic. While the saw blade is clamped, the momentum force may break the fan blade accidentally, so choose to use a thin saw blade. During sawing, don't need to use too much force, just press it down, slightly. After sawing for a while, it can cut the two fan blades next to it at the same time, and so on. It can cut away the unnecessary parts quickly.
when finished. You may choose to place the modified axis under the bottom of the needle brush tray or embedded it into the needle brush. Take my pump as an example. If glued it under the tray, the needle blades will scrub the pump cover. So, I need to embed it into the needle brush. However, because the fan blades are too thick, it cannot be embedded in the needle brush easily. Therefore, I need to use a hand file to make them thinner. In addition, I need to sacrifice one or two needles. Then, it can embed the fan blades into the needle brush easily. The next step is to prepare to glue them together. Firstly, remove the calcium foil accumulated on the needle brush. Otherwise, it will cause unstable bonding. In addition to choosing industrial acetic acid, it may use any apple cider vinegar bought in supermarket. About two hours, it is enough to dissolve the calcium. Here, I would like to remind you that check the axis parts of your pumps once a year. If there is too much calcium foil accumulated, use vinegar to dissolve it. Otherwise, the friction caused by the foil during the axis rotating will reduce the life of the pump. Ordinary epoxy glue and AB glue are usually for bonding materials such as metal, wood, ceramics, etc. Some of them indicate not suitable for plastic like PP, ABS, etc. In order to get the best result, remember to buy a model for plastic usage. In addition, I am used to use the kind with 3500 PSI to 4000 PSI. The epoxy glue has resistance properties to weak acid and weak alkali. So, you can sink it in fresh water and sea water. Don't worry. After glued, be sure to remember, idle it for 24 hours. Wait for the glue to be solidified inside and outside. Actually, nowadays, we can draw a 3D diagram of the needle brush ourselves. Use a 3D printer to make a needle brush. In this way, even though not having a needle brush on hand, you can modify an ordinary pump's fan blades axis. Transform it into a needle brush pump for protein skimmer usage. Twenty four hours later, the epoxy glue is solidified completely. I can put the modified needle brush axis back into the pump. Connected to the protein skimmer. 
let it operating normally again. In my own experience, such modified axis can operate for at least one to two years. If you cannot find any needle brush accessory for replacement, you may refer this modification method as an ad hoc solution. Next time, when I have any useful accessory modification or making, share with you guys again.